What's up, YouTube? Ryan Panny here. Hope you guys are doing reasonably well. It is time for a review of the new Bleed the Sky record, This Way Lies Madness, out last Friday, January 17th. So after extensively making fun of Verb the Noun bands in my Betraying the Mars review, I thought it was only fair that I actually review one of the unsung originals, because after all, Bleed the Sky were naming themselves Bleed the Sky during that early 2000s metalcore explosion, which is well before Verb the Noun bands became sort of a meme-worthy thing. They're from Orange County, so they sort of came in the wake of Atreyu and Bleeding Through and 18 Visions and Avenged Sevenfold, etc., etc. I have just enough peripheral awareness that Bleed the Sky is a real thing to, to have offhandedly mentioned them in that Betraying the Mars review, but their actual music slipped by me back in the day. So I figured the fact that these guys are reformed now with, with a majority of their members that made their 2005 debut, Paradigm and Entropy, this might be an interesting listen here. Like, what does it sound like in 2020 when one of those OG early 2000s to mid 2000s metal core acts puts out a record now. After all, these past few years, bands like Code Orange and Knock Loose have helped redefine the metalcore genre to critical success. And then meanwhile, the, the so-called second wave of metalcore bands like Crown the Empire have also redefined the genre to less critical acclaim. So where does a reformed Bleed the Sky fit into this? So This Way Lies Madness sounds very modern, for one. The band's hearts are clearly not in the past production-wise. And stylistically, what we have here is this sort of push and pull between metalcore on the one hand and the remnants of deathcore on the other hand. And the band can't seem to figure out which one of these they want to hollow out and just beat to death for 36 minutes. There's one song I enjoy called Carrion Bather where both these metalcore and deathcore influences are blended together seamlessly within the same passages and, and more broadly within the same song. Like there's that first riff that kicks things off where it's sort of this back and forth between on one hand those pedal tone riffs that are very common in that metalcore lane and then on the other hand the infamous palm muted flat five which <laughs> for the, the non-music folks are those really ugly sounding chugs that you heard Whitechapel do and Amur do 10 years ago. The opening track on here, Tongue Louse, is another good example of the lines being blurred between these two similar but still distinct styles. You know when you hear a deathcore song versus a metalcore song, and this is another track where the two coexist. Where things get significantly less interesting is on the tracks, the majority of the tracks on here, where the band just kind of pick a side. Like the song Carnage, which is just <laughs> one long, hideous, primitive deathcore breakdown with, of course, some studio-generated ambiance in the background to, to make this chugathon seem more sophisticated. The only non-deathcore element in the song, I suppose, is, is the mid-90s Fear Factory influence in the chorus. And what's also very deathcore about this song is the unrefined lyrical content, you know, burn down my temple, uh, see if I give a fuck, it's you and me, motherfucker. Those sort of, like, pit-ready, tough-guy lyrics are, are definitely a, one of the hallmarks of that early deathcore movement. Then, meanwhile, you have the title track, which is more trying to exist in this era. It's full-throttle, second wave of core. Those kind of down-tuned, betraying the martyr style grooves, at least the less extreme side of that band. And hearing this kind of stuff from a band that's been around almost 20 years, this is clearly an instance of the band either evolving or probably more accurately trying to adapt to their current surroundings. The worst song on the album by far, and, and the one that's the most hopelessly behind in terms of sound and style, is the track Ghost, which literally opens with the most pathetic two-note breakdown that's, I guess, supposed to pass for a riff. This song is really, really difficult to get through. I would describe Ghost, if we're continuing our theme here of metalcore versus deathcore, as mainstream rudimentary deathcore, but just with metalcore-ish vocals on top of it. I think that's a fair description here. It's just that, look, Anybody who remembers this era knows that Bleed the Sky are just a little over 10 years late on this stuff if they wanted to do it and have a big following. Whitechapel put out This Is Exile in what, 2008? And their first record I think was a year before that. Or on the more mainstream side of things, I hated this back in the day, but what about a record like Bring Me the Horizon's Suicide Season? This might seem like sort of an off-color comparison, but a lot of This Way Lies Madness, it sort of plays, compositionally speaking, like a watered-down suicide season just with less interesting, less memorable vocal lines. There's no Ollie Sykes in this band. And again, I was not a fan of that early Bringing the Horizon stuff. I do not make that comparison favorably. Although, now that I'm listening to Suicide Season side by side with this record, it's not that bad. I'm starting to get a little more callous respect for that early material from that band. Maybe I should 
go back and try to like it. That's what this record has inspired me to do. And something that the song Ghost also includes, uh, and now we arrive at the single most crippling thing about This Way Lies Madness, some of the worst and most poorly performed clean vocals I have ever heard on a major metal release. I I'm struggling to understand the angle here. I do get that sort of distant and detached uh, clean vocal approach that some bands take, that sort of intentional emotional flatness. You hear a lot of that on like Between the Bear and Me Silent Circus, that's a record that comes to mind. But that's Tommy Rogers, that's a good singer. The singing does have to be performed well. I'm sorry, but that is a requirement. I just don't understand how clean singing of this caliber snuck by five band members, a producer, mixing, mastering, A&R, just everybody okayed this and okayed this all over the record. To be fair, on songs like Ghost and unfortunately many others on this record, clean vocals are, are not a major part of these songs in terms of the time they take up, but they are so bad and so jarring that the, the 10, 20 seconds that they pop in tends to have this sort of ripple effect on entire songs. The song Ghost, of course, is an awful instance of this. The opener, Tongue Louse, is maybe one of the worst. When those clean vocals pop in after the first minute, it like stops you in your tracks as a listener. You're kind of looking around going, what just happened? The song Serpent, these clean vocals especially hurt because this is a part, the pre-chorus here, that could have been really cool in theory. You got these tight, mechanistic, chugging guitars underneath and those sort of spacey vocals floating over them. It's a very well-written part, but again, it's gotta be performed and executed well too. You can have a great script, but if no one delivers the lines, who cares? And it's such a bummer because in, in this case, this is a pretty central recurring part of the song. And you kind of just hear as a listener what it could have been if it was just delivered well. In fairness, I do love how just apocalyptic the ending of Serpent sounds. All in all, it's one of the better tracks on the album besides the singing. Also the single, Quiet Here, that's rough in the clean vocals department. And this song otherwise has some of the best and heaviest breakdowns on the record, so it's a real shame. You sensing a pattern here yet? These otherwise could have been pretty decent songs. Nothing special, but at least decent and listenable. I will say, on the other hand, the screams throughout this LP are great. Noah Robinson, the frontman, has this raspy, throat-tearing nastiness to the way he delivers these harsh vocals, and they land with their intended impact every time, even if they're slightly generic, I guess. But truthfully, this is not my record. Maybe if there were some fresh variations on these old genres, maybe if there were some better clean singing, although I'm not sure how much the clean singing actually belongs outside of a couple songs like Serpent. Maybe if there were some more inventive rhythm guitar patterns, we could have a conversation if we had all those elements. But this is the type of band where if you went to see them live, all you would remember was a bunch of breakdowns, a bunch of yelling, no songs, no riffs. And frankly, even as a music reviewer who's sitting here with headphones listening intently, that's kind of all I'm walking away with too. And a little bit of squandered potential. Aside from the, I guess, the sensory experience of well-produced aggression, there's nothing on this record for you to cling to that would inspire replay value. Now, interestingly enough, since I did miss this band during their initial run, I've been listening to their debut record, Paradigm and Entropy, alongside this one. And I gotta say, I'm enjoying that one quite a bit more. The clean vocals are still bad, but the riffs were awesome. I love the title track on that record. I, I really enjoy the tunefulness and the atmosphere of a song like Gated. Then a track like God in the Frame is basically Bleed the Sky doing this album better in 2005. Ironically, they've kind of gained a new fan. I suppose that's the silver lining here. Although the idea of a band significantly regressing over a 15 year period is sort of depressing. Still, that's a record I did not enjoy before today and now I do. So I'd skip this one if you're on the lookout for a good metal core release, which if you're not careful, those are few and far in between, but I'm always interested in being won over. This record did not do that. It's monotonous. It's painfully safe. It's the type of record that you really would not want to play for someone who is new to the metal genre because when they tell you that it sounds like one big long breakdown with some random unappetizing clean singing sprinkled in, you won't really have much of a leg to stand on. So again, unfortunately, you're better off skipping this one. This Way Lies Madness gets a three out of 10 from me. As always, thank you so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video and are not yet subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so by clicking right over here as well as checking out any of the other rock or metal related content that I publish here on a weekly basis. I really appreciate you watching, liking, disliking, just engaging in any fashion. Twitter, Instagram handle, at Ryan Music. Again, thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will see you soon.